This is the Kennedy or Bargani Isle in Ballantrae, South Ayrshire. This building, the Kennedy Isle, was attached to the old parish church. The parish church probably built it in something like 1604. The isle must be around the same date. The parish church was used for around 200 years before a new church was built just across the road. At that point, a lot of the stonework was removed and probably used in the new building. Also, the area was cleared to allow for a new burial ground. All that remains is a short section of wall that runs out from the west side of the aisle. This has the remains of a window in it, uh, and the thickness suggests it was at one time part of the original parish kirk. A number of memorials are attached to the outside, such as on the east side, a memorial to the Reverend Williamson, one of the local ministers, with some unidentifiable memorials close to him. Either side of the entrance door are memorials to the Ferguson Kennedys of Benane. And on the west side, there's a mausoleum or aisle to David Ferguson Kennedy of Finnitz. Above this section of the building, because the congregation had grown, they had to build an extra seating space, which was known as the Fisherman's Loft. Above the entrance door, is a carved descriptive text put there by Hugh Ferguson Kennedy of the name. This was because the internal text had become so badly worn it couldn't be read. Above is a beautifully carved coat of arms of the Kennedys of Bargani and Alstintia. This has uh, an image of Joan of Arc and also the French fleur-de-lis. That's because of the involvement of the Kennedy family in supporting the French monarchy. Apart from being the barrel isle of the Kennedys of Bar Bargani and Ardstintia and their close relatives, this also would have been a place of private prayer and contemplation. You can see on the east facing wall that there are signs of having been a window and a door. When the kirk still stood, the aisle opened into the church, and the door here may have provided a side entrance. When the old church still stood, the aisle opened into it with a very fine arch. After the church was demolished, then the arch had to be infilled with building rubble. So you still see it that way today with a wooden door and the outside of the arch still visible. Kennedy Isle contains one of Asher's so-called glorious tombs. These were 17th century memorial monuments built to the arist aristocracy, such as the Scalmoly Isle at Largs to the Montgomery family, and the Glen Cairn Isle in Comores built for the Cunninghams. Although still impressive architecturally and because of the ornate carving, these at one time would have been gilded with gold and brightly painted, but all that has worn away over the centuries. The Kennedy Monument has striking similarities with the Cunningham's Glen Cairn Monument at Comores in East Ayrshire, probably both carved by the same master mason, David Scoogle of Crail and Fife. The Glen Cairn Monument is a carved date of 1600, and the Kennedy Monument was probably carved between 1602 and 1605. On either side of the monument are the initials. On one side is that of Janet Stewart, who is the daughter of Lord Ockletree, on the left-hand side is that of Gilbert Kennedy of Bargani and Alstintia. The stone carved figures of husband and wife lie prostrate side by side. Gilbert is dressed in full armour and his wife is in the dress of the time. Their three children are carved below as half figures. Furthest to the left is Thomas, their only son, and to the right are the two daughters who both died young. Probably below them there used to be what's called a Bible board, probably the small Bibles carved upon it. And in front there are four slabs that gave entrance to the crypt where the bodies were placed in leaden coffins. Gilbert was only 25 when he was killed. There had been an ongoing feud 
between the Kennedys of Barganidan Stincha and the Kennedys of Cassillis. On his way into Mabo, Gilbert was attacked by 200 soldiers under the control of the 5th Earl of Cassillis. He only had 30 of his own attendants. After a short skirmish, he was, he was stabbed in the back of a lance and died shortly afterwards. His body was first taken to the old Kirk and Eyre, but later, when his wife died in 1605, the two of them were brought down to Ballantrae and interned in the New Isle. The coat of arms on the monument can still be vaguely made out, however all the inscriptions have completely been worn away, and if there ever was a mason's mark or signature of David Scougal, it's no longer visible. 